Back in 2014, the city of Pensacola in Florida saw over 20 inches of rain in a 24-hour period. And this had devastating effects across the entire city with roads being severely damaged, homes damaged, it required water rescues just from a one-day flooding event. This is the water line we had the first time we flooded, 2012. That was devastating. And then here, 18 months later, this is where the water line was, um, twice as much. We were very scared. We didn't know where the water was coming from or how high it would get or why we were flooding. Oh my God, should we leave? The disastrous rain in Pensacola shows the human side of storms and flooding. But was that event part of a larger pattern? The difference between weather and climate is really about the time and the scale. So weather is something that's happening in a small location locally at one point in time. Climate change is when you're starting to see changes in long-term patterns. It can be more intense storms or less frequent storms. It's really changes over a greater region and for longer periods of time. Christine Shepard is the Nature Conservancy's Director of Science in the Gulf of Mexico. Growing up in Florida, I always felt a connection to the ocean, and I often worry, will we have this forever? Humans are contributing to climate change by burning fossil fuels. So when we're driving our cars, when we're using heat and electricity, we're putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And this makes the atmosphere a little bit thicker and traps more heat around the Earth, which heats up the temperature climate change can cause a lot of problems. One thing we see is increased storminess or bigger, stronger hurricanes impacting our coastlines. Florida's low elevation makes it particularly vulnerable to sea level rise and storm surge. This is a 20-hour simulation model of the April 29, 2014 storm event. This particular model demonstrates how the flooding took place over 20 hours. The color coding on the model actually demonstrates the depth that the water got in the roadways as the storm progressed. The community's not engineered to withstand 24 inches, 26 inches of rainfall in a 24-hour period, so it overcame the present drainage system, the present community as a whole. The low-lying areas were flooded. We had a lot of bridges that were actually washed away. It created huge impacts because we've got to go rebuild all this stuff. Climate change patterns resulting in more extreme weather events affects communities around the world. Science and data are critical to help governments and communities model storms, helping to increase resilience to the damage caused by climate change. Resilience is really talking about being able to bounce back from an impact. And if you are resilient to those impacts, you're able to go through that situation and bounce back at the same level or stronger than you were before. The Nature Conservancy's Coastal Resilience Tool has data in all coastal areas of the United States and shows you what one foot, two foot, three feet of sea level rise could look like in your community. So the science and the tools help us map out where there are opportunities for nature to be part of the solution in terms of reducing risk and adapting to climate change. Oyster reefs, mangroves, and salt marshes have all been found to protect against coastal flooding's devastating impact. These living breakwaters reduce wave energy coming onto land and stabilize shorelines. And oyster breakwaters grow over time keeping pace with sea level rise. Project Green Shores is a great example of a project that increases resiliency to climate change and coastal impacts like storms. This complex of the oyster reef breakwaters and the salt marsh plantings really form a buffer along the shoreline of downtown Pensacola that has withstood the effects of storms already to this date. We can design breakwaters to reduce wave energy and actually build them in a way that they will grow oyster reefs on them. So they're self-sustaining and they're reducing the waves that are hitting the shoreline and helping to really stabilize that shoreline and make it stronger in the future. Many of the times that we build these oyster breakwaters, we're building them to help protect a habitat behind them. 
We'll put these breakwaters in to give it the space and the low energy that it needs to build up and become a healthy salt marsh. It's very clear that nature plays a strong role in reducing risk and adapting to climate change. Systems like you're looking right here, natural systems that mimic natural wetlands are the biggest solution. It provides much more surface area to absorb that water, slow it down, treat it. There are things that we can do to improve uh, how we live, how we build in the future. And this community has taken a proactive step where we've bought a lot of those wetlands and created nature preserves to protect those uh, from future developments. Climate is something that we should think about every day. It, it affects our lives every day and we should plan for it. There are steps that individuals, communities, and governments can take to address climate change. In your own community, you can ask decision makers, your county council, your city council, your mayor, do we have a plan? Many communities across the U.S. are developing plans to prepare for climate change, so get involved. Climate change is real. We see it every day. Nature has the best way that's going to help us the most. We have to develop in a sustainable fashion because at the end of the day, our communities have to be resilient. I hope that people will take action and feel inspired to make small lifestyle changes that collectively come together to make an impact so that we can adapt to climate change and make sure that nature is part of the solution.